Welcome to Good News Week, coming tonight from the Jesse James Wing of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival Rehab Centre. <laughs> and the big news? The nanny state. The nanny state, the government's health task force, wants to overhaul Australia's food labelling laws, meaning alcohol could soon carry the same kind of gory images you see on cigarettes. Instead of smoking harms babies, you'll have drinking causes babies. <laughs> And like cigarettes, the severity of warnings will vary from cirrhosis right through to singing karaoke. <laughs> On some bottles, the warnings will be very simple. Do not insert. <laughs> There'll be graphic images too, not of diseases or long-term effects, just what you really look like dancing. Ah, in the Middle East, organised crime gangs have abandoned drug trafficking and turned to a more lucrative source of income. Saffron smuggling. <laughs> spice, the final frontier. <laughs> Until recently, the only profitable spice that would fit up your ass was posh. The gangs are smuggling the spice into Mumbai for $3,500 a kilo. Gee, if there's one place where Indian food should be less expensive, it's India. <laughs> Customs officers are uncovering up to three cases of smuggled saffron every day. But it has such, mm, it has such a lovely fragrance. Cavity searches have never been so pleasant. <laughs> Or oh, yellow. <laughs> you know what this means? Border security can finally team up with MasterChef <laughs> and make the highest rating show of all time. <laughs> and it's terrible, ladies and gentlemen. Some of these herb and spice smugglers don't even have valid parsley ports. Uh, they'll strip search you and confiscate your clothes. <laughs> your clothes. They'll confiscate. You might even end up doing time. <laughs> oh. Oh. You love it. To force a confession, you may even be tortured on the spice rack. <laughs> Who's a dill now? Basil, <laughs> rosemary, <laughs> cardamom. <laughs> but spice criminals are vicious. Many innocent people have been assaulted. <laughs> are peppered and are fried until golden brown. <laughs> yeah, they love the spice jokes. <laughs> Did this stuff about herbs. <laughs> No one even noticed they weren't spices. <laughs> In Afghanistan, the government has banned live news coverage of Taliban raids. In response, the Taliban condemned the move, calling it an attack on free speech. <laughs> they even taunted the government. What are you, the Taliban? <laughs> The authorities say the ban will prevent extremists sending coded messages. See, when they're blowing up one place, it's actually a secret signal to blow up another place. Which may, in fact, be another message. Those crafty terrorists. <laughs> they would send a letter, but the Americans have been tracking them down from the return address. <laughs> the Taliban claim the ban on live coverage undermines their right to express themselves as weapons-based performance artists. <laughs> The Taliban just love watching things blow up. Besides the news, their favourite TV show is Mythbusters. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they considered starting their own network, but it's really hard to build a high-tech communication system when all you've got 
are rocks and donkeys. <laughs> And it's not just live attacks. They also don't want the government to censor Mama Fatima's hour of hummus wrestling. <laughs> and Sassy Salome's hot, wet burger show. <laughs> and that's the good news. feeling this should be plugged into something. <laughs> it's just a spare fucking cord on the side. That's the thing that, ch that, that turns Channel 10 on. <laughs> There's nothing going out. Okay, here we go. Once again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening tonight. With side split and guts busted, the little ray of sunshine, Claire Hooper. <laughs> Melbourne's favourite bouncing baby boy, Frank Woodley. <laughs> and coming to the Factory Theatre in Sydney with his show, Human Dressage, the beautiful British mind of Russell Kane. <laughs> oh, I love you, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> and they're hot on the trail of the big cat, Mikey Robbins. Host of Sleuth 101, star of this year's great comedy debate and owner of many fine boots, Cal Wilson. <laughs> and another hot ticket at the Sydney Comedy Festival this week, the sweet Georgia Peach, Reginald D. Hunter. <laughs> Reg. How are you, Reg? I'm pretty good, baby. How about you? I'm, I'm well. You all right? I like it when you say baby. You like that? It's, yeah, it's got you do realise that that is a showbiz baby. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's different than the baby, say, if we was drinking and alone. <laughs> well, what would the baby be then? Fun. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Where have you been since, uh, since we last saw you? Oh, uh, I've been to Sweden, I've been to Dubai, I've been to New York, I've been to L.A., um, I've been to uh, East Hell. Um... Is, it, is it a rude question? How well do you go down in Sweden? Is it language-based there, or are you doing mime stuff? I do pretty well in Sweden. Uh, they just be amazed to see somebody who's not white. And, um, <laughs> and um, everything else after that is just gravy, really. I mean, <laughs> you should go, man. They, they, they dig you too, man. I don't know. I don't know if I'm too short to go to Sweden, are they? They're grotesquely tall, sort of blonde people. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Blonde people get bl tired of blonde people. Beautiful people get tired of beautiful people. That's why I think you would do well, man. <laughs> Sweden. Sweden, here we come. Cal Wilson, gorgeous to see you again. Lovely to see uh, you. How was pleasure. your comedy debate? I heard you were very good in it. I was okay. I, um, I think I might have torn Paul McDermott apart <laughs> in the comedy debate. I don't know whether you've heard of him. Lovely the, man. In fact, I, I, the phrase I heard was, like a pack of hungry wolves. Hmm. In hot boots. Your hot boots, <laughs> man. Well, after you whoop Paul McDermott, but you could take a couple of festivals off then. You don't really have to work too hard after that. That's, My job is done. That's a wrap, baby. That's a wrap. <laughs> I've, I've decided I don't like them very much. And <laughs> yeah, Mr. we may be struggling Woodley? for points. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but Will the Beast? Yes. A, a brand new show for you? Yes, that's right. I'm doing it. Doing um, I mean, the, the title doesn't have any great... Well, well, the only reason why I've called it Be a Wildebeest, a friend of mine, uh, he, he's uh, got a private zoo that went bust and he had a thousand wildebeests he had to offload and I bought them. I'm, I'm settling them as merch after the show. <laughs> so, but other than that, it's just, you know, me running around desperately trying to think of things to do to stop the audience leaving before the end. <laughs> I'm just noticing your new haircut. You look like someone else on TV. You, have you seen the, the squirrel from the Bank West ad? <laughs> I actually, but I haven't seen him, but, it, but I often play with my nuts. Okay, there's... <laughs> Frank Woodley! Yeah, that's family entertainment. 
Uh, Russell Kane, first time on the show for you. Everyone else is a bit of a regular, I suppose. Yeah. Although not the first time on this stage, because I was also on Cal's team during the Great Debate. Oh, I didn't even realise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been, uh, I got to see Australia at the end of the last week. I've never been here before. I came to Melbourne, that's all I know. And I've seen Queensland and Tasmania. I've been all over the place. It's brilliant. I'm loving it here. Tassie's great. It's the only place where they uh, laugh when you ask them what is there. They laugh before they answer a question. I was in the cab driver and uh, I said, is there anything to do after 10 p.m.? And he just went... <laughs> 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 you sure is pretty. Uh, that's the end of that. Well, we hope you enjoy your first, uh, I suppose, feeling event with us. Yeah. First uh, time on the show. Yeah. Ooh, I'm falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> the first... I, know, I think we've worked out what that thing plugs into. Yeah. Got it, got it. I'm on fire. Ah. First skirmish is what's the story? Claire Frank Russell. Cop and Eiffel. 7-Eleven. Uh, 7-Eleven. And a, a car going, and that's Catherine, Catherine Manning, Manning, who is the, the... Say the, No for Kids? Oh, yeah. There was chips and... And, and then your, um... Sort of LLT, sort of teenage adult magazines. Yeah. I don't think they're aimed at teenagers. Well, zoo is and stuff, isn't it? Not, not I mean, like 16, no. 17. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Have I seen no, the whole really, thing? No, I really... No, 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 no. I just... <laughs> I, just, I, just I, think you're, I think you've got this Christ gorgeous, innocent... Of, no, they're aimed at 40-year-old men with the brains of 14-year-olds. Right, OK. Yes. <laughs> and, and come on, chips and porn are the two basic food groups. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, not porn as long as they have an asterisk on each nipple, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this magazine is always like a footy result just over a vag. You're like, it's not porn, there's a footy result <laughs> in a vag. It's completely fine. <laughs> So, no, I said to a kid uh, just the other day, it doesn't even relate that much, because we had some friends and they had a kid staying, and they said, oh, tonight we're having fish and chips, and they're really excited, and I just thought it would make them laugh if I said, really, I thought we were having chips and fish. I thought that would be a little... But they went... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so the there's no fish in there, there's just chips. <laughs> no, it's not. So anyway. they, don't, they don't want the chips next to the things with adult themes. You know, yeah, the, the yeah. thing about adult themes, like I remember there was a movie on SBS and it said, like they made an announcement it will have adult themes. So I waited up for hours, you know. <laughs> it was all about mortgages and taxation. Yeah. <laughs> right. But anyway, this is... Do you, really, do you really need a campaign to not feed porn to children in this country? <laughs> Their parents in Queensland going, have we been doing that wrong all this time? <laughs> we really love that DVD, Double Anal, as well. We're going to have to take it away. <laughs> Uh, you do have it. It's Ten points for them, ladies and gentlemen. Parents' groups are calling for a ban on the sale of soft core pornography at news agents, supermarkets, convenience stores, petrol stations, and milk bars. They're also terribly offended by the word milk bar. <laughs> the groups claim so called lads' magazines like People, The Pitcher, and Zoo are contributing to the sexualisation of children. Although, not as much as the new Fondle Me Elmo. The last... <laughs> the last thing kids want to see is provocative images of naked women when they go to buy cigarettes with their fake IDs. <laughs> to stop them being sexualised, you have to keep children out of the news agents and at home in front of the telly watching Beyonce and Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> Our spokesman for one magazine said the current rules were fine, they just need to be more tightly enforced. Then, when he realised it said fine, tight and force in the same sentence, he went back to his office for a wank. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey Calredge, curtain up. Oh, hello! Oh, he's very science fiction looking. Oh, so oh. Wow, he pushed his face right through that cloth, man. Right. Okay, dude, dude he did. He, he, he did. See, that's what happens if you go to the wrong part of Collins Street at night. In the 90s, the, the, the theory came out because they carbon dated the Shroud of Turin and said it was actually, they reckon it was made in the 15th or 16th century. But now they actually come out and said that the Shroud of Turin is real. Yes, there's a shroud of a dead guy who uh, we would prefer to believe was white and, um, <laughs> and we're going to call him Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the Vatican's into, uh, into marketing, but Shroud of Turin tea towels would be fantastic. <laughs> bedspreads, bedspreads. Yeah, yeah, bedspreads or curtains. Wouldn't that freak the neighbours out? There we go. I reckon a lovely spinnaker on Vatican One would be nice as well. <laughs> so 
this is uh, the scientists that have come up with a, a new 3D image of Jesus based on the Shroud of Turin. And they've worked out that Jesus wasn't the hot, tall, muscular, blonde dude that they thought he was. He was a chick. <laughs> Very close, apart from the chick part, ladies and gentlemen. Don't they have ten points? Scientists in the US have used genetic information, blood, and the impression of the Shroud of Turin to create a three-dimensional image of Jesus. The Shroud first emerged in the 16th century with no record of its origins and has been kept at Turin Cathedral ever since. It only comes out once a year for the Vatican Christmas party so the Pope can do his Holy Ghost impression. <laughs> ooh, 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 that singer! It's amazing how many members of the Catholic Church come out once a year at the Christmas party. <laughs> Well, certainly the Pope doesn't seem to be able to relate to people very well. Yeah. <laughs> he never makes eye contact. <laughs> the 3D image clearly shows that Jesus was a first century Palestinian Jew, a bearded man of Middle Eastern appearance. In fact, he only got crucified because of a misunderstanding at airport security. <laughs> Uh, the experts also say, contrary to popular depictions, Jesus was quite swarthy. And his surname was actually Bin Laden. <laughs> That's awkward. Uh, the, shroud, the Shroud is now on display in Turin, where you can see the three-dimensional image in person. And Jesus in 3D is fantastic. His whole body just jumps off the screen and bleeds on you. Uh, and if you let your eyes go slightly out of focus, you can see a dolphin. <laughs> So after one faithful round of Good News Week, the Hooper team are on 10 points, the Robins team 10 points. Coming up, the singers and the songs. It's Good News Week.